Hey, what's up? I'm Nick and Knight, joined by the global sensation and acclaimed singer-songwriter. It's my pleasure to introduce you. This is Kanon. Kanon, thanks hey, for joining me, man. Thank you. Now, um, now, thanks for stopping by. You're known throughout the world, and um, but you're still relatively new to the music scene for some people, I guess. So I, I want to yeah. start from the beginning. Um, tell me where you grew up. Tell me where you're from. Um, originally from Somalia. I, grew, I was born and raised in Mogadishu, and uh, kind of um, I was I was there until I was 13, and then made our way to New York and then Toronto, where that's my hometown, and um, been making music for for a, a little bit of a time. But every every album is my new album, my, my, and uh, as a new artist, and kind of enjoy that actually. Nice. So, uh, yeah. so what got you into music? You said you've been doing it for a long time. Like, what what were some of your first your first works? I guess you could say was it instruments or uh, poetry or how'd you yeah, get into it? Yeah, poetry first. My my family are a bunch of poets and and singers and playwrights and and so on. I gr I grew up around some of the most prolific people from my country, and so um, it's always been just kind of something that was around. Nice. Now, um, Wave and Flag was one of your biggest songs ever, would you say? Yeah. Now, it was uh, Coca-Cola grabbed it and made it the FIFA World Cup theme song. Yeah. Now, what's that like? What's, uh, you know, did you expect Wave and Flag to take off the way it did? I did not, no. But it, it, was, it was special. I remember when I was writing it and just kind of how it felt to be in the room with this song, you know, and just what it felt like. And, and so, you know, it was inevitable, but I didn't... I couldn't have imagined that it would be heard by billions of people, you know. Now, would you say that when you were making Wave the Flag that you, you th were waving flag that you thought about like a country, like a pride of country sort of song? Or is that the, is that the direction you intended it to go in? Because it I, really took off like a national anthem, so yeah, to speak, that everybody could relate to. It's true. I, I'm, I thought more about a human um, kind of, uh, I, I was I was thinking more about the human's pride, like... Um, which I think why it re it related uh, to so many people. It wasn't specific to a place or to a, an identity of sorts, but it really was about the human being's struggle, th their dream to have happiness and freedom and so on. That That's what I was kind of working on. Uh, nice. It's, it's awesome. Now, um, you've visited you know hundreds of countries, I'm sure, by now. You, you traveled the entire world. Where are some of your favorite places to visit? Like, What are your favorite countries, if you, if you could list them? Um, Vietnam is one of my favorite countries. Because of the food? Food is incredible. <laughs> the the the, uh, the environment too is just the greenest place I've ever seen. And um and uh, Portugal, I like Portugal a lot. Uh I like uh Venezuela. I, I you know playing in Venezuela was very interesting. Um and a lot of Africa is kind of amazing. Like Madagascar is kind of just one of the most some some of the places some of the, the the nature the you know the, I guess the things you see the wildlife and everything right yeah and just the people too just like people who have a different concept of how to live you know a, a life they don't they're you know generally there are people who don't wait to be happy who kind of are in the exercise of happiness every every moment which is brilliant to be around yeah for sure especially I mean you know I I understand exactly what you're saying I, I've been kind of studying. I guess the uh, the thought process that goes into always living with happiness inside you, rather than oh I can't find happiness, I can't find it. it's already in you. Yeah. You just have to experience it, you know. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, um, that that outlook really isn't you know passed on as much as I believe it should be. You know, at least here in, here in the states, you know. Yeah, it's rare. It is. Yeah. And um, now um, I, I guess you know on on the same topic of traveling the world, what is something that you notice that is similar to all the countries? Like you go to these different countries and you meet so many people, what is something that is consistent in all the countries? There is um there's a sense of kind of search that I find human beings kind of just people searching for something you know interested in and curiosity is very is is no matter what culture you're in you know interesting people have curiosity about them they're 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 like they want to know more they want to feel more they want to travel more they want to experience more and you get that no matter where you and are. they want to know the answers they want to know what everything right. is yeah. yeah and the truth is none of us really know what the right answer is you know? yeah i know but now, the search is what's interesting exactly yeah. now um i guess i guess switching gears to your latest track uh, is anybody out there nelly Furtado's on the song love nelly Furtado. she's yeah. beautiful she's a great voice um i got the message that you're saying we live in a world where it's easy to get discouraged and it's important to remember that you got to help your neighbor sometimes because like they're kind of down, and you can't bring them down. You got to try to lift them up. Am yeah. I right with that? Is that absolutely. where you're going? Absolutely, absolutely. And I also wanted to touch on the topic that, you know, of of loneliness. Because oftentimes we think of loneliness, and we think of, like, we think of older people, 
but this is like this is the young person's version of loneliness this song because instead young people just call it bored but really they they're lonely and so i wanted to write about that topic and and so on nice well it, it's a beautiful song and you have such an amazing message man um Thank i know you. you're on twitter um what are your, what are some ways that the fans can get in touch with you find your music it's kanan it's simply k n a a n so at Kanon okay. um, on Twitter and you find me there and uh, kanonmusic.com and uh, obviously you can find stuff on Facebook but you know follow me on Twitter because that's kind of you know I, I'm, I'm I'm the one who's writing uh, so you are active on Twitter you write back to your fans and stuff I you know do. that's the beauty of your Twitter you know because it's I always say Twitter is kind of another language and some yeah. people don't realize that uh, if you read jokes or read messages to someone who doesn't have a Twitter, sometimes they won't understand it. I don't know if you've ever experienced that. Yeah. And it's because it's a special relationship on Twitter. You know, that's it, true. It, that's true. And I also say sometimes it's a place where we can all be obnoxious and nobody cares, you know? Yeah. You can really express your inner thoughts. No, Man. I like I like it. So that. so what's next for Canon? Where are we going to see you next? We got um, the new single now, um, even at, following the Nelly one, is a, is a song called Hurt Me Tomorrow, produced by Ryan Tedder. And uh, that's about to hit the airwaves. Um, and uh, it's it's just a song about the moment in which a relationship has come to an end. And somebody almost always tries to kind of uh, sabotage the end and just stop it from ending. You know, like, yeah, yeah. We, we, we make all the excuses. Right now, I've got exams. You know, life is life is tough right now. Don't you know that I'm going through a heartache at home? You know, and, and this all these excuses never really amount to a relationship being saved. So I, I was in that position myself. And I wrote this song called Hurt Me Tomorrow, which I which I'm really proud of. So you'd say it's to a girl then? Yeah, it is to a girl. And it's Does just, she know? No, she doesn't. <laughs> and, and it's just like, it's a comedic look at something that would otherwise be really painful, mm -hmm. you know. But I, I think a lot of people experience that where we're like just in denial and trying to stop something from ending, even if it's good for us that it ended. Definitely. And, and I know you're talking about more of a romantic relationship, but even even in the friendship relationship state, you know, yeah. sometimes it's the greatest friendship ever, but, you know, that friendship drags you down a little bit and you and, have to... And you've outgrown it. Yes. Sometimes you've outgrown it and you're like, ah... You know, I, I, I'm living in nostalgia, basically, by being by hanging out with my old friends or, or whatever. And it's all right to grow. It's all right to move on. And, and and coming to an end, it doesn't necessarily have to be an end. Like, you know, and that's, you know, I, I pass it on to people if I ever give them relationship advice. Just because you broke up and you're going separate ways doesn't mean that it has to be an angry end. You know, yeah. that could be a peaceful level off where you kind of go your own ways and you'll always still have that to embark on. You know? Yeah. Well, that's actually the way it was with me and my ex, but... I get I get to have I get I get to take a stab at it and like <laughs> write Express about it, it and yeah, just most joke definitely. about it yeah nice well Kanan uh, appreciate you stopping by man you're you're a true inspiration uh, I can tell you're a very very deep character and I, I enjoyed you. our conversation thanks thank you a man. lot appreciate I did too I appreciate yes, it all right that's a wrap Great. perfect uh, if I can just get you to do a couple Some